So let's say you want to start making videos and you want to do face to camera style videos, but you're not sure exactly what gear you want to get. Maybe you're thinking about using a smartphone, but maybe the quality isn't quite there for you. So you want to actually get a fancier DSLR camera, but you're not exactly sure which setup to get. So what I wanted to do in this video is create for you kind of a package, a starter setup for if you want to get started with video. So without getting into the whole backstory, when I first started this YouTube channel, it started because A, I got a new camera, and B, I had a whole list of things that I wanted to share and video just kind of seemed the best way to do it. Now with platforms like TikTok and YouTube Shorts or just YouTube in general and all the other video platforms or platforms like Instagram that are shifting to video, now has never been a better time to start making videos. And the cool thing is because the technology has so rapidly advanced, you can get a fairly affordable setup and have your videos having a particularly professional quality. Now, what I will say is you can get some pretty good quality out of your smartphone. Just about any new iOS device or any of the newer Android devices, super fancy cameras built in. They're gonna have 4K a lot of them. You're gonna be able to do 24 frames per second. But while smartphones have advanced, they still do lack a little bit, particularly in the area of lens choice. As you can kind of see with my video right now, I've got a little bit of that blurry background. There's a little bit more contrast in terms of being able to see lights and darks. That's known as dynamic range. Things like that, that will help set you apart from the competition if you're willing to invest a little bit to make your videos go a little bit far and beyond what you can get with a smartphone. Now, what I currently shoot with is a Canon R5, which runs a little bit south of $4,000. And then the lenses I use in conjunction with it are several thousand dollars a piece as well. Now, for most people who are just getting started, that's a little bit overwhelming, particularly if you're not planning on monetizing the videos that you're making right outside the gate. So what I wanted to do with this video was answer the question that I've gotten in the past before. If somebody were to again come up to me and say, I want to get started with video. I don't necessarily want a smartphone because I want it to look better than that, but I'm not ready to invest too heavily in the gear to get something along the lines of the R5. Do you have some recommendations for what I should get as somebody who's just getting started? So if you wanna get right to those gear selection choices, feel free to skip ahead using the chapter marker. However, what I wanted to do first was take a quick moment to help you consider whether or not video might actually be for you if you haven't considered it in the past. So for me, one of the main driving forces for why I decided to dive into video was A, because I'm a pretty visual person, but B, a lot of the things that I wanted to teach were very visual in their nature. So a lot of the tools and the tutorials that I've showcased throughout the years have been highly visual. So if I tried to start a podcast where I tried to show you how to use a particular piece of software, not only would that be annoying, that wouldn't be very useful content for you to listen to. So one of the things that you might want to stop and to consider is the type of work that you do or the type of profession or hobby that you want to pursue. And if it has a highly visual element to it, if so, you might want to consider a visual or video approach to how you teach or how you showcase or how you talk about that subject. Now, the type of video setup that I'm going to be recommending here today is one that's going to feature a talking head or face to camera style of video. Maybe in another tutorial or another series, I can show you how to actually edit some of these videos. A little bit of that I've already done in my Final Cut Pro series, but this is going to be the type of camera setup if you want to do exactly what I'm doing here today, which is face to camera. Now, for those of you who are open to or considering the idea of talking to a camera for the type of videos that you're creating, but you're a little bit uncomfortable with the idea, one of the things that I can tell you is that with practice, it does get a little bit easier. It never really stops being weird, even right now as I am talking to you, that's what I'm envisioning. I'm instead thinking of somebody sitting in a chair right in front of me and I'm trying to explain this to them. Okay, so the main point I wanted to make there was that if you're not already doing video, but you already create content, so maybe you've got a podcast or maybe you've got client work that you do, but you do want to share what you're learning 
or what's useful or interesting or entertaining with people, I would suggest at least considering doing that through video. Okay, so with that spiel out of the way, let's go ahead and dive into the specific pieces of gear that I would recommend for people who are getting started with video. Okay, so the obvious place where you're going to want to start when it comes to getting video gear is the camera body itself. So this is the Canon 90D, and this is actually the second camera body that I've purchased. My very first one was the 80D, which is the predecessor to the 90D. But this has, in my opinion, the perfect settings for getting really quality video. So what this is going to shoot, this is going to shoot 4K, which is what I'm gonna recommend, do 4K. Everybody's got 4K screens and TVs nowadays. So 4K video at 24 frames per second. It has other settings. It can do 60 frames per second at 1080p, which works if you're trying to do some slow motion, but that's not what we're talking about today. If you're trying to get started with video and you're gonna be doing talking head style videos similar to the one I'm doing now, all you're gonna need is 24 frames per second. And then with that 4K quality to ensure that you can upload either to YouTube or whatever platform you want to, in 4K quality. Now, if you're wondering why don't you do 30 frames per second, which is what most smartphones and most kind of cheaper or lower end cameras default to, this is really just a matter of preference. But in my personal experience and what you'll find with a lot of videographers is they tend to shoot at 24 frames per second, mainly because it more closely resembles film. When you have 30 frames per second, it tends to look a little bit more amateurish. It looks kind of more like a home video or a soap opera or a news platform. It doesn't quite have that cinematic filmic look, which you're probably going to want if your whole goal is to have your videos look a little bit nicer than the average smartphone. So one of the other reasons I'm going to recommend the 90D, and there are going to be other cameras that have similar features as well, but this is going to be a flip out screen so that once you have this camera pointed pointing at you, you're able to look at this nice little screen to see what you look like. Now, if you are going to use a camera with a flip out screen, what you're not going to want to do, and what I see all the time in videos, don't watch the screen while you're talking. You need to look directly into the lens. If you were talking to someone at a coffee shop and during the whole conversation, they were looking at your ear, that's going to be the equivalent of looking at this the whole time that you are recording your video. So make sure while you're talking to the camera, you're looking through the lens, but before you're talking to the camera or in between cuts or takes, you can look at that little flip out screen to get an idea of what it's going to look like when the video is done. As a quick pause here, some people might be wondering, why don't you do Sony or Nikon or any of the other brands out there? They might be totally fine, but this is my recommendation because from the very beginning, I've only shot on Canon. So this isn't supposed to be like a comparison or a gear review. This is just, if you sat down with me and asked me what gear would I recommend for somebody getting started, this is what I would recommend at least to start. And it has a nice little hot shoe on here, which is going to be really important for our next thing, which is going to be a microphone. Because if you're gonna be using a smartphone or a smaller camera that doesn't have a mount on the top, you're not going to be able to mount a microphone, which is going to be just as important as we'll get to here in a moment. Okay, so I'm not going to walk through all of the settings for this particular camera, but one thing that I will recommend is that you do not shoot in auto. Make sure that you actually go through the process of learning at least the basics of your camera to ensure that you've got the white balance, the color temperature, the aperture, the ISO. Make sure those are all set to a specific setting to ensure that your visual quality always maintains the same look and feel throughout the length of your video. Okay, so that's a lot on the camera. Let's go ahead and move on to the next piece of gear, which is super important. And that is a microphone. So I actually just recently picked this particular microphone up and it is the Sennheiser MKE 400. And this thing has some amazing audio quality for how small it is. Now, when it comes to audio quality, other than looking at the person's ear when you're having that conversation with the camera is audio quality. So even if you have the fanciest Hollywood camera in the world, if your audio isn't up to snuff, then it's going to ruin the whole thing. Audio is half of the viewing experience. So you have to have 
at least audio up to a particular level for this to work really well. So this microphone just mounts right on top using that hot shoe, you just kind of screw it right into place. And then you have directly connected right into the mic slot. You now have audio for your particular video. Now the great thing about this microphone is that it's a shotgun mic and it's a directional shotgun mic. So as long as it's pointed at the general vicinity of your mouth and it is not too far away, then it's going to pick up your voice. It's going to be a nice crisp audio experience. That's going to be significantly better, not only than the onboard mic, on the camera itself, but from any smartphone that you're going to have on the market. Okay, so the next thing that's going to be super important is a lens. And this one you would have a ton of choices for. However, this one I think is a perfect starter lens and also one that is great for doing face to camera type videos. So this is a Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter F 1.8. And if you're not already pretty familiar with how lenses work, the lower the number of the aperture, the wider the aperture is, which means the shallower the depth of field. So in other words, you'll get that nice, fuzzy, blurry background, which makes footage look so much more professional than what you can get on a smartphone. Because we've all been in that Zoom call or that Zoom meeting where it tries to kind of fake the blurry background and we all know it doesn't look real at all because you can kind of see the person's edges blurring and some of the background trying to be in focus when it should be blurred. This is an actual wider aperture, which means that just like more expensive lenses would, it's going to keep you in focus and it's going to, to some degree, blur out what's behind you. Now, because this is an 18 to 35, that means that it does have a little bit of a zoom into it, but it's a wide enough lens to where you can keep this camera close enough to you where the audio will pick up really well. Because if you get a really long lens or a telephoto lens and you set that camera across the room, then the audio quality that you end up with is going to deteriorate the further away that microphone gets. So this kind of gives you the best of both worlds in the sense that a little bit of a nice blurry background with you nice and sharp and in focus while still being close enough to where the mic will still pick up good audio quality. Now to go back to the camera for a moment really quick, part of why I recommend this camera and why I wouldn't recommend maybe a cheaper one is because this has face tracking built in, which means that since you have this nice lens, which has a shallow depth of field at f1.8, it's going to be really important that your face stays in focus if you're always moving around back and forth as we tend to do when we're talking. If you just try to lock focus on a particular place, once you go back, goes out of focus, go forward, goes out of focus. But with the, the live face tracking built in, this is going to track your face as you move and always keep you in focus and the background still nice and blurry. Okay, so with the lens on, here's kind of what that setup is going to look like very portable. This lens is a little bit heavy, but that tends to be the case when you're getting nicer lenses. Now as a quick aside, what I am not going to recommend for this particular setup is vlogging. And what I mean by that is the type of face to camera stuff where you're trying to walk and vlog. That's not what this particular setup is for. This is for a tripod setup where you're going to set up the camera on a tripod and you're going to talk to that camera. If you want a vlogging camera, I'd probably have to do a completely separate video or setup on which camera to do for that, particularly if you're looking for one that's more affordable. And the reason that I say that is because this goes down to 18 millimeters and this is not a full frame camera. All that that means if you're new to cameras is that because it's not full frame, the angle isn't nearly as wide as you're gonna get on full frame. So what that means is that if you try to put this down to 18 millimeters, hold it out at arm's length, it's gonna be pretty tight on your face. Too close for comfort for vlogging. So if you're gonna want this particular setup, it's probably going to be because you're going to want to put it on a tripod and that's gonna be the best way to use this. Okay, and speaking of which, here is the particular tripod that I recommend. This tripod is extremely lightweight. It goes up to about six feet. So if you want to stand up and talk to the camera, that works great. If you want to just extend it like halfway and sit at a table or at a chair, like I'm doing right now, you can do that as well. One of the other things I really like about this particular tripod is that it has a ball mount. So it's extremely easy to point at any direction. 
It's got a nice little level on here so it can give you an idea that you're basically level. The camera has one built in as well to kind of tell you how level your shot is. But this is just a super lightweight, great tripod that works perfect if you're going to be shooting either standing up or your table is shorter. Like right now I'm shooting at a pretty short table, so it's not long enough to put a table-based tripod on. So this one needs to be on the floor at about half the height that it can go to since I'm sitting down. Again, if you're gonna be standing, you can put it up higher, but again, a really nice lightweight tripod. Now, if you're gonna be shooting on a table and you just particularly need something that you wanna set up on a table and talk to camera, then I'm going to recommend the switch pod. So I have a ball mount on here, which you can also purchase separately. But the great thing about this is that now technically this could be, and I have used it for vlogging. So as you can see, you can put the camera and you can talk to camera. As I mentioned, still not gonna work with this setup. The lens is not wide enough for vlogging. But what you can do, if you've got a big table that you're on, is just set this on the table and then talk to camera. So make sure it's far enough away to get your nice wide shot. But if you have a table that's too big and you can't fit that big tripod behind it without going too far away, then what you can do is you can get one of these, set it on the table, you've got your setup. Now, the last thing that you're going to need, which is also super important and something that far and away from all the other things that we've mentioned so far is going to distinguish you from all the other YouTubers or vloggers who are doing face to camera videos, and that is lighting. Lighting will make or break your video. And that is why so many times I've seen super nice video, even super nice audio with fancy lenses all together on maybe a $5,000 setup. And yet they have a window behind them, which is completely blown out while their face is covered in shadows. So I'm not gonna give you a whole lighting tutorial here today, but what I will recommend for you is the specific lighting setup that I currently use which will work for almost any talking head style of video that you can do. First is a newer light, which is going to help produce a lot of light. It's gonna blast a lot of LED light out of it. And this particular light that I'm recommending has a remote that goes along with it that allows you to set color temperature. Once I've got my color temperature set to 5,000 Kelvin for my light, I set and match that in my camera so that my skin tones and my color temperature are exactly where I want them to be and they're not constantly changing. So if I had a window behind me, which I don't, even if the light was changing, I would still remain consistent with this light and the light setting that's in the camera. Now, the next piece to that light is the light dome. What this is going to be is it's going to be a big dome with a nice white soft box that softens the light that passes through it. So what this is going to do is spread out that light. It's not supposed to be like a spotlight because if it's a spotlight on your face, it's going to show all the wrinkles, it's gonna be more harsh, it's going to look more unprofessional. But if you've got a larger light source that's closer to your face, it's going to be softer, it's gonna be more even, it's gonna look more natural, and it's gonna look more cinematic. And then in that soft box, it's really important to have a grid or a honeycomb, it's also known as that. And this honeycomb is going to help ensure that it focuses that diffused light on you. I know that sounds counterintuitive because I just talked about softening the light, but what it does is it helps prevent that light from bleeding into my background. So my background is a little bit darker and I'm a little bit brighter as I should be as the focus and the subject of the shot. And then the last thing is a nice, lightweight, super big, super tall tripod that can hold that light to ensure that it always stays in place. Okay, so that is my entire gear list that I have for you, particularly if you're wanting to get started with video. The cool thing is that this will hopefully save you a ton of time because I've gone through a ton of lights, a ton of cameras, a ton of lenses, a ton of microphones, and these are the ones if I could go back in time and have a conversation with myself without looking at my ear, what I would do is I would say, get this gear to start with. While this is a little bit more expensive than just using a smartphone, it gets you better image quality, better audio quality. It sets you leagues beyond somebody who's just using a smartphone 
and or just doesn't really know what they're doing with the gear that they have. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to leave a link below this video, which will have a complete list of all the gear that I talked about in this video. Now those are affiliate links to Amazon. So if you'd like to support this channel, feel free to click through to those links. Even if you end up buying other gear, it still helps the channel. But my main goal here is just to get you started thinking. You don't necessarily have to use verbatim all of the gear that I've recommended here today, but it's just the gear that I personally would have really liked to have known about at the very beginning. So if I can save you the time, the hassle, the money that would have been required to figure out that this gear would have been great to have started with, hopefully at least it will save you those things as you're considering whether or not video is something that you want to pursue. If you found this video useful or helpful, feel free to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.